These aren't the stories your mother told you. No, these are the other stories. <laughs> Today's episode of The Other Stories is Life Distilled, written by Georgia Cook and narrated by Josh Curran. Simone Clark worked and exhibited from a crumbling Victorian warehouse on the outskirts of London. Lined with windows high in the ceiling, dust motes swirled in the sunlight. The air smelt of paint and white, raw heat. Andrew had arrived thirty minutes late, clutching a coffee and muttering apologies as he ambled up the steps. This morning, he'd expected to spend the day reviewing copy edits. Instead, he'd been sent across London on a hand-me-down errand from the senior editor. A fluff piece. A page filler. A morning of amateur drudgery. Who beyond the limited realms of modern art knew or cared about Simone Clark? Now, it was three hours later, and the coffee sat cold and untouched by the door. And it's solid glass, Andrew breathed. No reinforcements. No reinforcements, replied Simone. Didn't need them. Andrew turned his gaze upward. The octopus towered over him, captured as if drifting on an ocean current, its tentacles trailing, grasping and curling. Andrew's face reflected back at him from the creature's abdomen, wide-eyed, duplicated over and over in quiet awe. And no cracks, he breathed. No noticeable joins either, not even a hairline fracture. Never in his years as an art critic had Andrew seen a body of work so... wondrous. No, wondrous wasn't the word. It simply didn't do enough to describe the sculptures, just as... Sculptor wasn't enough to describe Simone Clark. Her studio sang. A menagerie of animals filled the floor space. Coiled snakes, hissing tigers, bellowing hippos, each carved impossibly from a single block of glass. Sunlight slanted through their bodies, casting strange, flickering patterns across the floor. Every fang, every eye, every smooth glass haunt rendered in blazing light. (coughs) Andrew coughed, smoothed his hair back, and turned to Simone. Next to her creations, the artist seemed almost shadow-like outlined against the studio wall. Andrew blinked, forcing away the sudden oddness of seeing something human in this strange white world. How did you do it? he asked. If that's not an impertinent question, my readers will want to know. He wanted to know. Up until now, Simone Clark had been a sculptor on the fringes of the art world, known for towering concrete monstrosities and shambling, frankly amateur, depictions of ogres and trolls and other junkyard fantasies. To say this was a departure. Simone smiled, luminous in the gloom. I am sure they would, she said. Fractals of light chased themselves across the plaster behind her, flickering in the afternoon sun. The effect was mesmerizing. You can tell them it's a secret. It made for a good enough article quote. And uh, when do you plan on exhibiting them? Soon, I think. Simone stepped forward, close enough to touch, and ran a finger across one of the octopus's tentacles. I still have a few more to finish. Can I see? A work in progress might- No. Simone flashed another strange smile. No. Not. Yet. Ah, right. Of course. Andrew shook himself, realising how focused he'd become on the collection. And what'll become of them after you exhibit? Private collectors, I suppose. Simone shrugged, as if the wider popularity of her creations were of little interest. I suppose I'll make more. 
This really is very... I think people will be extremely excited about these, Simone. Another twitching smile. And you? Simone asked, turning to Andrew. This close, he could see every pore, every light beading of sweat across Simone's brow. Do they excite you too? Andrew's skin prickled. He opened his mouth to reply, and quickly shut it again. Uh, well, I'll certainly come to the exhibit. Simone's smile widened, her warm brown eyes flashing gold in the sunlight. Please do. I would like that very much. Andrew returned to his apartment as afternoon dipped into the warm glow of golden hour. He had his article to write, and a series of annoyed texts from his editor, demanding to know what was taking him so long. The outside world felt dimmer than when he'd left that morning. Not simply the sunlight, but everything else. Every colour, every sound, seemed weaker. The air had a damp, washed-out quality to it, compared to the blazing light of Simone's studio. Andrew made himself a cup of coffee, sat on his kitchen table, and opened his laptop. The screen bathed his face in pallid blue, waiting for words. What to write? What could he possibly say? Simone's glass block studio, her collection of shining animals so perfect they almost seemed to breathe. Andrew's hands hovered over the keys, struggling to capture the right words. Something caught his attention, hovered beyond the laptop screen. He glanced up. Afternoon had stolen over the kitchen, deepening the shadows, muffling the gloom. Andrew's heart jolted unexpectedly. It was too dark in here, too dark to concentrate. Had the ceiling always been so low? The doorway so narrow? Had the walls always pressed in so tightly, squeezing the air from the room? Unable to stand it any longer, Andrew bolted upright, ran to the window, and flung open the curtains. Sunlight tumbled across the kitchen tiles, nipping the shadows, easing the dark. Andrew stood, rooted a moment in the pool of golden warmth, staring across the rooftops beyond his apartment. Not enough. He hurried into the living room, then the bedroom, even his tiny bathroom, flinging open curtains and levering up windows, letting sunlight flood the apartment. Not enough, still not enough. He could still feel shadows lurking beneath the bed, beneath tabletops and cupboard doors. They crawled across his skin, chattering like sharp little insects, smaller now, but concentrated. Andrew scanned the room, wide-eyed, his heart fluttering uncomfortably. What else could he do? What else? No shadows to cast if there was nothing to cast a shadow. He grabbed the back of his sofa, shouldering it hard across the carpet until it collided with the wall, shortly followed by the coffee table, then the TV. Any smaller objects, mugs and photographs, books and knickknacks went in the hallway cupboard. Andrew's eyes screwed shut as he lobbed them into the dark. This done... He sat in the middle of his now empty living room, breathing hard, the patch of sunlight uninterrupted by shadows. He'd never been frightened of the dark before, not even uneasy, but now the thought of it seeping into his apartment covered the world like a vast, muffled blanket, filled him with a strange, gnawing dread. What was wrong with him? Was he ill? Something shifted on the edge of his imagination. He remembered the vast, glass octopus swimming above him in its frozen current. Simone's menagerie of light. Oh, how the world within her studio twisted with it. Beautiful. So beautiful. That night, curled up on the carpet, every light in the apartment blazing, Andrew finally fell into an uneasy sleep. In his dreams... He drifted alone in a great black ocean. Waves crashed overhead, sounding more like the shattering of vast glass statues. Andrew floated, lighter than driftwood, buffeted on currents he had no hope of controlling. Below him, deep in the blackness, something stirred, 
A glint of light rippled across translucent tentacles. A vast eye, gleaming in the black, rolled open to stare. It was hungry. So hungry. And Andrew never wanted to leave its side. Andrew fumbled awake in the morning gloom, his heart pounding, his eyes darting into each shadowy corner. He knew what he had to do. He couldn't delay. He had to go back. He had to see the statues again. Dawn was still breaking over London as Andrew arrived at Simone's warehouse studio. He'd had to force himself outside, sticking to the main roads, his mobile torch set to full beam. The shadows slithered and broke before him like ocean spray, tumbling in the wake of the meagre light. Staring ahead, hardly daring to breathe, he stumbled up the warehouse steps and rattled the handle. Locked. Of course, it was locked. What did he do now? He couldn't wait until Simone arrived for the day, until someone came to unlock the building and explain what, exactly? That the world was pressing in on him? That shadows no longer felt safe? That he needed to stand inside again, cocooned in that blaze of light, surrounded by perfect glass? Just for a moment? Something caught Andrew's attention. A security camera sat high on the wall above him, blinking red and green. It turned gently, catching Andrew in its eye. Andrew steeled himself, stepped back, and walked carefully around the edge of the building, keeping close to the wall. Simone's studio backed onto the edge of a vast industrial estate, panning out across abandoned scrubland. Far in the distance, the high-rises of central London rose like disordered teeth. Andrew's gaze swept the building's facade. There! A first floor window! Slightly ajar, the curtains stirring in a light breeze. Andrew clambered onto the sill, levered the window the rest of the way, and tumbled inside. He hit the floor and froze, listening hard. Nothing stirred. No footsteps. No rustles. No sounds of life in the vast, old building. Stumbling upright, Andrew hurried down the corridor, struggling to recall the twists and turns that had taken him to Simone's studio the day before. Finally, he spotted a familiar twist in the corridor, and beyond that, a familiar door. He hurried forward with a cry and jerked it open, breathing in the surging smell of dust and old paint. Ahead of him lay Simone's studio shining in the sunlight, utterly unchanged. Andrew paused a moment in the doorway, drinking in the majesty of the glass menagerie until he could bear it no longer, then hurried out across the floor. The herd rose to embrace him, rearing horses and barking dogs, slithering snakes and prowling cats, and in the middle of it all, the vast, glass octopus. Andrew stumbled to a stop, small and insignificant in this echoing space. He straightened, his eyes closed, breathing in the dust-hot air, letting the sun warm his skin. His heartbeat stilled, the panic slowed, time ghosted away beneath him, until it seemed it might pass him by completely. Hello. Andrew flinched. Simone stood in the studio doorway, wearing a smile of wry amusement. Andrew let his hands drop, his cheeks flushed red with embarrassment. Uh, Sorry, I, uh, the door... It's all right. Simone stepped across her threshold, her silhouette immediately swallowed by light. I hoped you'd come back. Andrew's stomach hitched. How could he explain? What could he possibly say? I wanted... I know. Simone's smile was strange, unwavering. She stopped beside him, surrounded by her animals, and followed his gaze to the trailing octopus. They are enchanting, aren't they? Uh, There they are. 
Simone touched Andrew's arm, gently, almost delicately. I am working on something new, she said. Something special. Would you like to see? I thought you said... I know. Simone's smile widened, her gaze roaming Andrew's face. Her eyes were blue, he noticed, as blue as chipped crystal. Hadn't they been brown yesterday? But I think it's ready now. She withdrew her hand, but the spot where she'd touched him tingled oddly, like goosebumps. Andrew wondered suddenly what it would feel like to be rendered in glass, cold and smooth and filled with light, standing in this vast glowing space. Not a crack, not a seam. Would it feel cold? Warm? Weightless? Would he fight it? Would he ever want to leave? I want to capture life, Simone whispered. Life distilled in its purest form, isn't that what we all search for in art? Andrew nodded, his throat dry. He would have agreed with anything. I've tried so many creatures, so many little lives, but I need something with a mind, a spark of imagination, something willing. Andrew tried for a wry smile, remembering his role in all this the article he should be typing, but oh, he was willing. Bathed in sunlight, floating in calm, he was willing. You sound as if you're attempting. Simone smiled, and in the sunlight, her smile shone as bright as any mirror. Exactly. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of The Other Stories. Life Distilled was written by Georgia Cook, narrated by Josh Curran, edited by Duncan Muggleton, with music by Blair Moon and Tom Robson, and sound effect provided by freesound.org. The episode illustration was provided by Luke Spooner of Carry On House. A quick thanks to our community managers, Joshua Boucher and Jasmine Arch, and to Carolyn O'Brien for helping with our submission reading, and of course to Ben Errington for rustling together the most incredible content sandwiches that he serves from his social media sandwich van. On these sandwiches, he puts cheese, onion, and the best ingredient, bread. Georgia Cook is an illustrator and writer from London. She is the winner of the LISP 2020 Flash Fiction Prize and has been shortlisted for the Bridport Prize, Staunch Book Prize and Reflex Fiction Award, among others. She can be found on Twitter at, at Georgia Cooked and on her website at georgiacookwriter.com. Josh Curran is a narrator and writer. He's narrated many episodes of the other stories over the show's lifetime. He's also the creator of the horror audio drama podcast, Miscreation. You can follow him on Twitter at at jcurrentwriter. The Other Stories is a production of the story studio Hawk and Cleaver and is brought to you with a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. That means don't change it, don't sell it, but by all means share the hell out of it. So, until next time.